Good morning, Connect Church family. So glad to have you hopping on today. We're so honored that you would choose to be here with us. And we uh, just love you and thank you so much for that. If you haven't yet, please go ahead and like our page, share this video, subscribe to our channel, all the social media things uh, so we can get this word out to as many people as possible. We know that today is a little bit of a different day with it being July 4th. But we're excited about what the Lord is going to do in this house. Amen. So I want to go ahead and give you the opportunity to give today. We have many ways for you to do this. You can go to our website at Connect Church 757 and click the Give Now button. You can also pull up your cash app and use money sign Connect Church 757. Or you can text the number on your screen. These are all super, super easy, safe and secure ways for you to go ahead and give your tithes and offerings as this is something the Lord has commanded us to do, and He always is faithful in giving back to us. And so we are um, thanking you so much for that to help us keep these ministry going, that we have through the church this online program, our food ministry, and all the different things that we do here at Connect Church. Amen. I uh, just want to remind you of our weekly schedule. We have Tuesday night prayer on social media. We have Wednesday night night school on social media. And then here in the house, we have our youth. Doors open at 530, goes from 6 to 8 for those in grades 6 through 12. And so we want to invite everyone out to that. Also a reminder, this Friday, our men will be having their night out at the Tides game. Um, it is limited ticket, so the first 20 men um, who see uh, Elder Eric will be able to have those. It is $12 a ticket, and the game is at 7 p.m. Again, that is this Friday for the Tides game, and I know they'll have an awesome time. I always love going to the Tides game. It's always nice and relaxing. Uh, well, we hope that you are ready to go ahead and get your praise and worship on. Our worship team is ready to go. And then to hear the word from Bishop on this holiday, even today we can rejoice and worship the Lord. And we just thank you for being here with us. And if you're catching us on the replay, thank you so much as well. And go ahead again and share that video. We love you guys, let's go. Happy 4th of July. We hope that you guys are enjoying this day, celebrating with your family. We want to invite you to worship with us, us this morning, and let's just give God all the praise because he is worthy of that. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's praise him. Celebrate our freedom in Jesus.
glorify you, Lord. You are more than worthy to be praised, Jesus. Yes, Lord.
love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be your Thank name. you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
blind dancing in the deep. Peace be still, you are here, so it is well. Even when my eyes can't see, I will trust the voice that speaks. Good morning, Connect Church family, and happy 4th of July. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. Let's go ahead and get into this week's Connect Connections. Don't forget our normal weekly schedule. And then this Friday, the men are going to the Tides game. It'll be at 7 p.m. and it's $12 a ticket. It is first come, first serve for the first 20 men. If you're interested, make sure you see Elder Eric to get your ticket. Hope you guys have some fun. Okay, you guys, I have some exciting news. In August, we are having a big outrage. Shh, keep it to yourself. No, I'm just joking. We wanna get the word out to everybody. But before that happens, on July the 18th, immediately following second service, we'll be having a volunteer lunch. So if you would be willing to help us on that date in August, throw this huge event, we need you there. Again, it is July the 18th, immediately following second service, and we'll be having a lunch as well. I hope to see you there. Make sure you mark your calendars. July the 11th, we are having a baptism service. This will be in our 11 a.m. service, and we would love for you to come and be a part and even participate if you would like. Please let us know whether it's through a DM or signing up if you would like to partake. We would love to join in with you in this awesome time. Okay, we're still working on sending our kids to kids camp. For all of those who have given, thank you so much. We're on the home stretch now. We still have sponsoring a child where you can just give online or you can work with the June and July fundraiser that is going on or you can purchase a personalized cup through Miss Natalie, who is offering her services to us. If you have any questions, please see Pastor Esther, and we just thank you so much for contributing. All right, Connect Church, now is the time to give your tithes and offerings. We have multiple ways for you to do this, so let's go ahead and do it. You can go to our website at Connect Church 757 and click the Give Now button, or you can pull up the Cash app and use money sign Connect Church 757 or you can text the number on your screen. Thank you so much for always faithfully giving, and I know the Lord will richly bless you. All right, Bishop, thank you so much for being here with us on this July 4th. Let's go ahead and get this word out. Amen. All right, thank you, Courtney. I appreciate that. And I just want to say, Thank you to Sam and Courtney uh, Pedraza. Uh, I know Jose's helping as well and some others, but they are our IT team, our IT team, and are putting us online, giving us all these things and abilities and that types of things to do that, putting a lot of time in that. Those video takes a lot of time, and we appreciate their effort of doing that and just uh, uh, coming out here off hours and videotaping those videos and putting those all together so we appreciate that thank thank you so much for that happy fourth of july just want to say happy fourth of july to all of you glad that you are connecting with us today glad that we're not we're not going to be in the house today so 
know that, that we're not here uh, in the house or we're not going to have you here in the house. So recognize that. But we are here to talk about our nation. We've been talking about prayer and we're going to talk about praying for our nation and what it's going to take for our nation to turn around. There are some things that are going on in our nation that need to turn around. That's a good place to say amen right there. So we understand that and we know that. So we need to get these things. Uh, you know, I, I was been thinking about this, dwelling on this for this 4th of July message and that type of thing. And, you know, I, I, I'm so glad. What is that? Lee Greenwood's uh, song, I'm glad to be an American. Man, I am. I'm glad to be an American. I got my red, white, and blue. You can't see my shoes, but I got blue shoes on. Got, I, I, I want to represent America. I want to represent what's going on. So I understand that I am proud to be an American. I'm proud to be, I'm glad, not only am I proud, I'm glad to be in America, best place to be, better than any other place that I know of. Start thinking about that. You know, we've got some systemic problems. We've got some situations. We've got, but you know, all that comes back to unredeemed men. Don't care where you are. Don't care who you are, what happens, men are men, and if they're unregenerated by God, they've not turned around by God, they're going to go and be selfish. They're going to go and go and be self-serving, and all those things that are going on and that's happened in our history and our past, you know, it, it's, it's true, absolute. One of the things about it, I, I did think about this today, I don't know that America has ever produced anybody on the level of Hitler, don't know that anybody's ever produced anybody on the level of Mussolini. I don't know if anybody uh, in America that's been produced on the level of some of the emperors of Japan were, and, and maybe even China is. But understand that we haven't got that, we haven't got it all right, but there are some that's got it worse than we do. So we need, need to celebrate this Independence Day that we are that independent country and God has helped us. Yes, there are issues. Yes, there are problems. And that we have the freedom to address the issues. That's a good thing. That's a, that's a possibility there and a, and a potential that we have to fix those things. So let's come together. Let's come into agreement. Let's agree that there was wrong. There was and there is wrong going on. Let's agree that there is some good going on and there are some things that are taking place that are trying to heal those things. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. So we're glad you're with us today. Know the Lord's going to bless and minister that to you. We're going to come to you. Some of you could guess 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. God's going to bless. God's going to minister. And I believe what's going to take place that God is going to bless and minister again in America. Solomon's just built this humongous, beautiful, wonderful temple. He's dedicating it to God, and he's turning these things over to the Lord, and the Lord does some things. But I want to just talk about a little bit what's going on. So he's just finished his prayer and talking to God. So Verse 1 says, when Solomon had finished praying, I'm just going to read some scriptures to you today. We're not going to be real long. I know you're on, on 4th of July weekend and it's all good and uh, fireworks are going to go off and probably you're in a, somewhere getting wet in the pool or in the lake or something like that. So pray, praise God. I'm glad you're here joining us for a few minutes. We won't keep you long. When Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and sacrifices. Do you hear what's going on? Solomon prayed and fire fell. Sounds like Elijah, doesn't it? When he was going against those, in those prophets of Baal. Sounds like Elijah when God said, I'll be the God that answers by fire and I will consume the sacrifices that you've given. So understand that God is the God that answers by fire. God is the one who works, and we still believe in that Holy Ghost and fire. Come on, somebody now. we got to understand there's some 
fire going on. We got to get a fire stirred up inside of, inside of us sometimes. We got to get something, got to get this more in a red shirt on. We need to get a Holy Ghost and fire taking place and let God minister, let God pour out and touch and let him answer by fire. Some of us need to get a fire inside of us. God's got to crank up some things. He's got to stir up. He's got to uh, fan the flames of fire and get some fire inside of us that we can once again serve him the way that we should be serving. I need some fire in me. I believe there's a fire burning a little bit. Got to feel something going on here. So I understand that there was a sacrifice and the fire of God fell and came and consumed the sacrifice. Uh Uh-oh, watch out now. Watch this to where the, the Bible says that we're supposed to be a living sacrifice. We're supposed to be the ones consumed by that of the Holy Spirit. We're the ones that's supposed to be consumed that of God, that we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice and say, God, here am I, use me. God, here am I, you can consume me if you need to as a sacrifice, as fuel for the sacrifice. So that fire came down from heaven, consumed the sacrifices. And the Bible says, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. That could be the, could be the, could say house as well, temple. And the priest could not enter the house of the Lord because of the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. Can I just tell you that the Bible's talking about there was a physical representation of the glory of the Lord. Well, I grew up and we called it Shekinah glory. The word Shekinah means glory. So we were just saying glory, glory, but we were up, somebody learned a Hebrew word. So Shekinah is glory and glory is Shekinah, but it was a fog. It was a physical presence. There was something tangible there that they could see and it represented. They knew they could feel the presence of God. And it says that it filled the temple of God. Can I just tell you, I, this, is, this is good preaching for me. I like this. Not only are we supposed to be consumed by fire, but we're supposed to be filled because we are what? Don't you know? 1 Corinthians 6 says, don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? That you are supposed to be filled with the Spirit? That you're supposed to be consumed by the Spirit? That God is going to fill you and there's going to be such an infilling that there's going to be a presence on you that there can be a present on us and know, a knowing that God is with us. Listen to what it says. The priest could not enter the house of the Lord because of the glory of the Lord was, had filled the house. There was such a presence. They were out here waiting for Solomon to, to finish praying. And when he finished praying, they were to go in and start and present the sacrifices and doing the other sacrifices that were going on. They couldn't go in because of the presence. I think that's great. I think that's, new, uh, that's good news to where we understand and see that because there was such a holy in there. There was such a glory in there. Uh, the, glo- the word glory also means weightiness. You can feel. You can feel the presence of the Lord. You can feel the power of God resting and residing in this place. And we're thankful to God, to God to do that. So they couldn't go into the temple because of the presence. And when all the children of Israel saw how fire came down and the glory of the Lord on the temple. They saw the glory of the Lord, not only in the temple where the, where the priest couldn't go in, but they could see it residing on the temple. They bowed their faces to the ground and on the pavement and worshiped and praised God saying, for the Lord, he is good for his mercy endures forever. Solomon was uh, dedicating the temple in Jerusalem, the capital city of the country. It would be as if we went to Washington, D.C. and dedicated a huge, big place of national worship. 
Boy, wouldn't that be great. Boy, wouldn't that be a great feeling? Wouldn't that be a great day to where we could do that? And not only in Jerusalem in comparison, there had been a hundred or 200,000, probably about 100,000, they say, would live in Jerusalem, 80 to 100,000 normally. But during the feast, there were big, uh, in gatherings, there had been million, uh, I bet hundred, uh, two, a couple hundred thousand there at Jerusalem. But just think if we had this something compared like this at D.C., there would be a million people. I don't know if some of you all went to this, some of this Washington for Jesus stuff. I did. Some of these other things that we did, these prayer things, and there would be tens of thousands. 50 and 60, maybe even close to 100,000 that were there on the courtyards and on the, the, the Washington Monument Square and all those things where we were, and we were worshiping and praising God. We need some events like that to happen in D.C. to where the glory of God will fall, where the, where the nation will see, where they can see a physical presence, where they can see a consuming fire. And if the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in the United States today would get on fire with God, if they would get... If we could get the church united, if we could just get the church in agreement that God is God, we would resolve about all of our problems. There's still probably politicians will be able to go in and mess up anything, but understand if we could get a church that was focused, a church that was resolved and saying, we're going to move in this direction, it would change, immediately change the path of the United States. Again, I want you to know I'm glad to be here. I'm, I'm celebrating the 4th of July right with you. Understand and know I'm glad, but we need God. We need a movement of God, and I wish there would be a tangible presence of God to go and dwell and reside I don't know if it's still going on, but I know for many years, uh, several years ago, that it had lasted for years, that there was called what they called the Ten of David that was going on, and there was 24 hours of worship going on just outside of that courtyard or that big field at the, there at the Washington Monument where they had set up a continual place of praise and worship unto the Lord. We need God. Then the king, and I'm just going to read you some scripture here today. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. King Solomon offered a sacrifice. Listen to this. Sacrifice of, of 22,000 22, bulls, 120,000 sheep, so 142,000 animals, 142,000. Just think about the logistics of that. Just think about how many priests there had to be. Think about how many altars there had to be, how much blood there was, how much cutting was going on. The phenomenal, phenomenal. We had to go on for hours. If you had, what, 10,000 priests, they'd been doing, what, 14,000, 1,400 sacrifices themselves. So understand what was going on, what was a tremendous dedication unto God, a costly dedication unto the Lord. So they dedicated, and the priests attended to their services, and the Levites also to the instruments of the music of the Lord, which King David had made to praise the Lord, saying, For his mercy endures forever. Whenever David offered praise by their ministry, the priests sounded trumpets opposite them while all Israel stood. They were worshiping the Lord and sacrificing unto God. Furthermore, Solomon consecrated the middle of the court, was in front of the house where the, there were, he offered burnt offerings and fat and peace offerings. And because of the bronze altar which Solomon had made, he was not able to receive the burnt offerings, the grain offerings and the fat. At that time, Solomon kept the feast of the, for seven days and all of Israel with him was in great assembly from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of Egypt. And on the eighth day, they held a sacred assembly for they observed the dedication of the altar seven days 
and the feast seven days, and on the 23rd day of the seventh month, they sent the people away to their tents, joyful and glad of heart for the good that the Lord had done for David, for Solomon, for his people, Israel. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord, the king's house, and Solomon successively accomplished all that came into his heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house. So he was accomplished. After eight days, they sent people home. Second time, God appears to Solomon. And we know the first time he appeared, he prayed for wisdom, and God granted that and said, it not because you didn't pray, pray for riches and fame, I'm going to give that to you as well. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon. This is verse 12. He appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer, and I have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. Can I just tell you, God has chosen you as his house to dwell in, and that you've been chosen to be a house of his sacrifice and give it unto the Lord, and the Lord has chosen this place for myself as a house for sacrifice. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or com- or command the locust to devour the lamb to devour the land and send pestilence among pe- my people if my people we understand what a pestilence is now don't we we've been going dealing with that now for lately haven't we we understand what locust is when there's the crops fail when there's a drought and there is no rain some of us look and think, think, think we're comparing this to ourselves sometimes we get we get dry. We get dried out in ourselves. Our country is dry spiritually as far as God is concerned. We're dry. We've had locusts come in and consume whatever spiritual things that were going on, whatever things were happening. There's revivals and there's pockets of revivals all across the country, and I'm thankful for that, and I hope and I pray to God they spread like a wildfire. And that God will cause them to spread. But there's some things they're trying to consume. If you look at television today, your movies today, they're trying to consume and show everything. They're calling what is right evil and what is evil right. So we've got to understand we need God to minister in our country. He said, if, he, he come up and he said, said if sense of pestilence. And, but the thing of it is, is said that if God sends it, And if God's sending it, it's for a reason, that God is waking us up. Here's the verse. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, one, humble themselves, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, We've got to understand we as a nation need to humble ourselves. We have been a proud, boastful nation. There are some arrogance that we've had. And we all know that. We all feel that and, and know that even among ourselves, we understand that. We've got to understand before God, we need to humble ourselves. That doesn't mean to be weak in front of any other nation. It doesn't mean to bow down to any other nation. Not talking about that, but I'm talking about the country, talking about you and God. One-on-one as a country, one-on-one as an individual, us with God, we need to humble ourselves. Because if we, until we realize without him, we can do nothing as a country and as an individual, we'll never succeed. We've got to humble ourselves ourselves and we've got to pray been talking about a prayer series here's our praying this is what we've got to learn to do we've got to learn to pray and believe God that God's going to turn things around will you pray for this nation I was thinking about this the denominations the networks the fellowships should have got together and made July 4th a day of prayer and repentance a Sunday when people are at church anyway for the most part that they're going to be 
there or looking or thinking about God on a Sunday that we should have made it a national day of prayer. They'll humble themselves and pray and seek my face. We've quit seeking God. God, what's your will? What's your kingdom? What are you wanting to do here, oh God? Help me to help you do what you need to do. Humble themselves, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. We haven't turned. We haven't turned things around. We, we've got to turn things. See, when we repent means to turn your back on it. That's not good for television or uh, production here, but to repent is to turn your back. Will we turn our back to sin or are we turning our back to God? Will we repent and turn around and repent from our wicked ways? The Bible says that when we do that, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. We need God to heal our land. We complain and gripe and say all this and all these things that are going on in the world and all the things that's taking place in our country. Not until men become redeemed will it ever be right. You cannot dictate righteousness. It has to come from the hearts of men. We've got to understand that. Then I will heal from heaven and, I, and forgive their sins and heal their land. And now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to, the, to prayer made in this place. He said, in this temple, I'll listen. Can I just tell you, in your temple, if you'll pray, if you'll humble yourself inside of your temple, he'll listen and hear your prayer. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. Can I just tell you, Jesus loves you. Can I tell you, the Father loves you. He said, I'll be there perpetually. If you'll open yourself up, if you'll be the dwelling place, we talked about it last Sunday, if you'll come into that secret place with God and pray, humble yourselves, as a country, if we would humble ourselves to God, God wants to pour out. God wants to touch. If we would, but he wants to hear. He said he would come and dwell in you. God's dwelling in you. If you've confessed Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, then he's dwelling in you, and that Holy Spirit will quicken you. Same Holy Spirit that quickened Jesus' physical body and turned it and transformed it. He's trying to transform you as well. Understand, prayer works. Understand, God will turn around. God can change things. We can have a suddenly... It'll probably take a process sometimes, but it'll take us suddenly once in a while and turn things around. Understand, we need to get things turning around. We need to get things processing, get things going in a different direction. We need to, change. We need to humble ourselves, and we need to pray America. We need to pray. Oh, my God, we need to pray. And ask God for forgiveness. Ask God to forgive us and to help us pour out his spirit on us once again. This 4th of July needs to be a time of dedication, of spiritual dedication that we have for ourselves. And dedicating, trying to push our country into a spiritual revival. We need to go into a spiritual repentance that we can believe God to minister and pour out to us. Would you believe that with me? Will you pray with me? I'm just going to pray right now. I'm just about done. I'm just going to pray right now that God helps us to help America. Would you pray with me? Father, I just pray that in the name of Jesus. God, that you would pour out. You'll touch. You'll provide. You'll minister. You'll move, oh God. Touch us and help us, oh God. As a country, God, God, we pray. We repent, God. We rep repent of the injustices 
that have happened, God. We repent of all the wrong things that's happened, God, that, that have been set up and established and the, the things that are just too difficult to overcome, God. We repent that, God. God, we recognize and we have to acknowledge that we, as a church, has to call those things out. But, God, we in the church are not, not, not innocent because we're so fractured. Sunday's the most fractured day there's more discrimination going on on Sundays, God, than any day. So, God, you forgive the church and help the church to stand. Help the church to unite, God. Help the church come together, Father God, I pray, to change the heart of this country, to change the heart of this world, God. We need to change America to help the world. And, God, I ask you to pour this out on us on this 4th of July on this special day of our country, God. God, we want to be red, white, and blue, God. We want to be supportive, God. And we, we pray for our leaders, God, this, despite of who they are, despite of what's going on, despite if we agree or disagree, despite a, a, a mayor, a council member, a governor, a senator, a congressman, God, no matter who is it is, what it is, God, we pray, God, that you use them. God, that you, we pray that there would be righteousness brought. Your kingdom come in our city. Your kingdom come and your will be done in our state. God, your kingdom come and your will be done in our country, oh God. You rule and reign, God. We'll give you praise and we'll give you glory for that. In the name of Jesus. I believe America can repent. I believe America can turn. I believe it can humble itself and pray and seek God's face and turn from its wicked ways. Let's pray and believe God. I believe in prayer. I believe that God wants to turn things around. And he is turning things around. Not trying to be a commercial, but let me just encourage you to, if you can be involved with something, I'm been trying to support it and wanted to see if I could work it out and try to go myself. Don't know if I'm going to be able to or not, but on July 23rd, there is a prayer for America going on. I know there's a guy who's writing the circumference of the, well, you know him. He's been to our church, Gary Burt. He, he, he's going to write a circumference of America. There are caravans coming from the four corners of America, Maine, Washington State, I know it's California, where, where it's coming from, Mexico, New Mexico, Florida, the tip of Texas, and the center, I think it's Minnesota, all converging onto the very dead center, the geographical center, the heart of America, on July 23rd. That's Lebanon, Kansas. Lebanon, Kansas. And there's a Praying for the Heart of America, I think it is, dot .org, dot .com, something, something to those effects. You could find it. There's tremendous, there's prayer routes. I know the one from Virginia I heard was going through Cane Ridge, Kentucky, which was a place of tremendous revival for the pioneers that were going out to the West. They're hitting prayer spots as they go, and they're praying for the nation will be turned around in this July. So let's start getting in agreement with that. Let's pray with that. Let's be in agreement with that on Ju uh, July 23rd. Let's believe God to touch his people. Hope you got a word today. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you need to say, Lord, forgive me on this 4th of July. Save me. I repent. I'm sorry for my sins. Accept me as I am. I accept you as my personal Savior, and I love you, Jesus. The Bible says you'll be, pray you'll be saved. You'll become a new creation. You can change those wicked ways, and God will help you do that. Pray that prayer. Let us know that you prayed it, and we'll be in agreement with you. As you go your way today, let me bless you. Let me speak favor over you, that the Lord bless you and minister to you that he'll bless you when you come in and go out, that he'll make you the head and not the tail, that you'll be above 
uh, only and never beneath, that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And all those accusations that will come against you, God said he would condemn and uh, judge against them. For I'm persuaded that neither life nor death, nor anything present, anything past, anything present, or anything in the future, anything that's coming, can separate me, ever separate me. Never, ever separate me from the love of God because God loves me. He loves me unconditionally. He loves me right now. He's created me to be a conqueror. He's cre created me to be an overcomer. I am victorious in him. I can do all things in him. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord make his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. Have peace on this 4th of July. Father God, I pray that you just minister and bless your people. Let us go out with these words of blessing and favor for today and that we can be a blessing and favor to our country. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Good seeing you today. Amen.